creating posts in WordPress couldn't be simpler, but we are going to take it a step further. If we go over to WordPress and go to post and we go to add new, you'll then get a screen where you can start to add posts. And if I just go and bring in the sidebar over here, you'll see that we can start adding in categories, featured images, excerpt, and we can go and add in our content. You can add text, images, videos. There's lots of items you can use over here. And the great thing is that when you do kind of then build a single post template, it will bring over that content as you build it. So if you decide to put in lots of fancy colors and bold and reds here and there, it will do all of that. However, there are limitations. All you have is what you have here. What if you wanted to collect from people something like the reading time of a post or maybe the level of a post, basic, intermediate, advanced. Maybe you're talking about courses or particular types of services. Maybe this is like a menu website, not a menu website, a food website or a travel website. And you want to share details that must be present on every single post. You might forget to put it in or if you've got people that are doing guest posts, it could become a problem. So what you want to do is add in some custom fields. Now, there are lots of plugins out there. However, I'm going to show you how you could do it completely for free just using a code snippet. So I'm going to go over to snippet and I'm going to click add new and I'm going to dump this in here. Now, this does look quite complicated, but don't worry, OK? Um, I will put a copy of this code and a link in the video description. Obviously, you're not going to use the exact same code I've got here. But the way this code was generated was I popped this text into ChatGPT. Um, like it or lump it, OK? I had a look at it, double check the content, and it looked fine for me. And I tested it out and it does what it needs to do. This is going to create for me three custom fields, and it's not only going to do that, it's actually going to create a drop down box for me as well. Reading time, level, and I've even got one for source. So into this field, I could dump in a URL, I could dump in a location, I could dump in whatever I want. Let me now just go and hit save changes and activate. This saves me adding in another plugin because I'm not having any repeater fields. Uh, I'll put a link in the video as well in case you don't understand what that means, but I'm not doing anything too complex. I've now activated that. Now, if I go over to my posts and I go to add new, you're going to notice that we now have three new fields there. I've got reading time with the word minutes because that's how I wrote it. So I could go in here now and say four minutes reading time. We've got a drop down for our level and I can pop whatever I want into it. I can pop in a URL or a bit of text. That is now going to be visible on every single post. So let's go and create a brand new post straight away. I'll give it a title, dump some Laura Mipsum text in. I know this is not amazing, but I just want to get across how this works. And at any point, I could go down here, hit a return, go and hit the plus sign, add in a image. Let's go with this one here. And of course, I can scale it, you know, shrink it, do what you want. And I could align it to be in the center. I mean, if you find the spacing isn't absolutely right, you just go above. You can drop in a spacer and move images up and down. That is simplicity how you would just create a post. This is why using the block editor for posts is actually not a bad thing. So I'm going to click add new category and give it a name. You could, of course, go into WordPress where you have posts and it says categories and you could go and add them in there individually or you could just do it on the fly. We're going to call this one web design, hit return. And in fact, what I'll do is I might as well create some more as well. If you wanted to create a subcategory, you could do so. I could go over here and say go for bricks builder and this will fall under web design. And I hit that. You will now have a subcategory over there. I'm not actually fussed about that. So I'm going to just remove that for now and just go for web design. In your tags is where you would go and add in anything that's pretty important from an SEO point of view. So if this was a particular brand and it wasn't going to fit as a category, go and start sticking in some words in there. Don't do what people were doing in the year 2000 where Britney Spears was the tag for nearly every post out there. But think very methodically about what you want to show. Now, we don't have a featured image over here, so we're going to go here, click this, and we're going to add in a featured image. Again, please do remember to make sure that all of your images have some form of an alt text in there because it really helps 
from an SEO and a web accessibility point of view. Now you can add in an excerpt if you want. I'm not always crazy about them, depending on how you're gonna show your blog archive. It is completely optional. The last thing I'm gonna do is just say, do not allow comments because I just don't wanna be moderating them. Now if we go back over to our actual post, imagine you've now done everything you wanted to. You've put whatever text you want. I'm gonna say this has got a reading time of, uh, no, we'll go with five minutes. I'm gonna say this is a basic and I'm gonna say the source of this, and I've just typed in a URL. You can pop in words. You can pop in whatever you want, okay? And that's all we're gonna do. And then I hit publish, and we now have a post. Now, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this, uh, change the title, change the featured image. I'm not gonna change the content, but I wanna get about five or six posts on here so we've got something when we start working on our Bricks post archive template. So I have six posts now and they all have their categories except this one here, which actually crosses into three categories and that's perfectly okay as well. Now we haven't done any um, rank math or any keywords, anything here. We can do that later on so you can ignore the non-applicable that you're seeing here at the moment. If you go and view any of these posts, they do look really really ugly you know it's not you know the contrast there is all wrong at the moment yeah you know it, it I mean it, I mean look you can get away with it if I'm honest you could get away with this okay I mean you got your footer still you still got your header at the top you could get away with it but we need to really improve on it and at the moment this is how our posts look which again it's not too bad but let's make it look so much better and make it fit more of our branding on our home page. And also we're gonna have a blog page. And then obviously when you click into them, we want this to look so much cleaner and better. And we are gonna create a sidebar as well. We go to bricks, we go to templates, we click add new, and we're gonna give this the title of post archive. And then from the template type, we are gonna pick this one over here called archive. I know it's not, it doesn't say post, but that's what the archive is there for. Let's click that. What we're gonna do is just dump in a section and a container into the section. We're gonna follow through the same style that we've been doing before. So I'm gonna go and give this two REM padding on the left and the right. And into the container, we are gonna go and grab the post widget. Now, if you go and type in archive, you're not gonna get anything. So what you need to do is just type in post like that and you will see post. Don't start pulling over any of these. These are more relevant for say the single post template, which we are gonna come on to later on. But now we're just gonna dump in the post and straight away we get that. Click on the title and it's gonna take me to that very boring, ugly post, well, the, the example that we have at the moment. But let's make this look a whole lot better than what we have at the moment. Let's go to my section. I'm gonna say that uh, forever and a day, there will always be five REM from the top. Uh, don't care what break point you're on and it will follow that through so you don't have to go through and check every break point. We go to the post, let's click on the content and we have quite a lot of settings here but we're gonna go through them systematically. The very first one is the query. You click this and you get a bit of a pop-up over here and this is now where you get to define, well, what are we gonna see? This down here is more about the fields and the layout, but this query is about what you're gonna see. So we are gonna see posts, obviously, but we could also do pages, which is really, really ridiculous because none of my pages have a featured image. Remember, if you wanted to do that, go over to settings, go to page settings, go to social media, and down here you'll have your image that you wanna go and set, which we're not doing for this scenario. Let's just go back over to our post, go to query, and we're gonna remove that. I mean, it will default to post, but you can if you want, just make sure you stick it in. What's the order you wanna go for? Do you wanna go for date order? Do you wanna go with descending or ascending? Maybe you wanna do it by the name or the author, by the way, if you're ever working on a WordPress website and your products or your posts, you want to do them by date order, but you want to kind of manipulate the order a little bit. Because if you go with title, it's A to Z or Z to A. And it start, you find, well, these aren't really working for you. You can see the timestamp of when these were done. What if I want this post over here to be the latest one? It was done on the same date at 9.17. I'm gonna go in here, quick edit, and I'm gonna change the time to be uh, 25. And I hit update, 
that post, okay, is now at a later time. Now when I refresh the page, boost your online credibility is now gone over here. So if you've created products, but now you want to be a little bit, you know, controlling over the order, just go and change the date. I could, if I want, change this to only show two posts. At the moment, we only have six, so I'm going to leave that blank. We can also offset. So we know the boost you're online is the very first post because it's in date descending order. If I put in a one, that first post has disappeared. If I put in a two, the first two will disappear. I put in a three, the first three will disappear and you get the idea. This is a great little feature here where I might say I'm going to exclude the boost post like that and it will now disappear. Maybe the boost post is post number five and it gets, and well, it gets really ridiculously silly if you try doing offsetting there. I can now exclude that entire post. Maybe I just don't want it visible on here. Or you can just restrict, include, exclude categories. So terms include, I'm going to say, well, give us the uh, digital marketing one. You can define what you want to do. Now, why is that good? You could use this for a particular category with a particular style. You can then create another one with a different style for a different category. So you're not restricted to just doing one kind of style. And if I was to scroll back up and say, only show me two posts like that, and when I scroll down and say, give me an infinite scroll, and let me just view that now on an actual page, as you scroll down, they start to appear, okay? So what would have happened is, and I'll try and show you that again, you have one and then it jumped through. So if that was like a full screen and you only had one, as you scroll down, more will start to filter through. Now I'm going to move on to the layout tab. Uh, and this is where we currently have a grid layout. You could, if you want, go for a list like that. Uh, you can get rid of the images as well, by the way. Or you could go for a masonry style, which works quite well when you have a mixture of horizontal or vertical portrait images. So you've got a bit of that like brick effect. Or you could go for metro as well. For anyone that's kind of bored of your traditional da -da 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 design, this is not bad. It really isn't. However, depending on how much wording you got, it might start to look a little bit cramped. So I am going to go for the boring standard grid for now. I'm also going to say that we have three colors. I mean, look, you could go with five, you know, I mean, why don't we do six? You know, if you could change the size of your wording, maybe your post titles are very short. You could get away with that. Let's just pop it to three. We are, I mean, if I remove the spacing, they're now going to be cramped up against one another. If I was to go with 100 pixel, you can see what it's doing. I think the 30 pixel is actually quite nice, so we'll leave it at that. And here's the option to now make the very first post be full width. So there we go. We have our full width. You scroll down and you have your different, well, the standard design. We're going to do some quick styling. And then what we're going to do is bring into here the custom field. Because can you notice they're not there? And that's the other thing as well. Out the box, it's not going to pull anything through. But we can easily do that in a moment. Let's go over to image. Do we want to show the image? Well, yeah, it's kind of nice. Do we want to link the image? Right now, the link is on the title. I would say linking on the image is a good idea as well. I really do. I don't see why you wouldn't want to do that. We can modify the size of it so I could go with a 300 like that and make it smaller. But what I do like is the grid image ratio. So if you go here and we pick 16 to 9, you're going to get a very horizontal landscape. If you go for the 4 free, it's not so bad, but it's not as cramped. I also strongly recommend that you set your image size to be full. Now let's get onto the fields. We currently have the post title and it says the word link and we have post excerpt. Well, I or we already know that I'm not using excerpt. So I'm going to get rid of the excerpts like that. They're gone. Now let's click the post title link. It's a H3 and we can see the spacing. So if I was to get rid of that, you, you know, I mean, I don't need to explain what that's doing. That's now controlling the positioning of it. If I click on the lightning bolt or the dynamic data post title, however, post title does not, there you see that title there. It's now put it after one another. So you can actually add it in twice. In fact, I'm going to do this. If I go and say hyphen like that, you're going to hyphen in between. Can you see my mouse? That is a link. That is not a link. Because can you notice here, we've got colon link. So if I was to go in now and do colon link like that, that is now a link as well. So what bricks give you, don't just go, oh, I don't want that and delete it. Study it for a little bit, learn something from it and utilize that later on. 
I am gonna leave the title in and leave the link in as well like that. I'm gonna give this a size of 1.6 REM. Now, I'm not using any clamp here because I want it to be 1.6 regardless of what size screen you're on. Just make sure you pick your color and pick your weighting as well. If you want to centralize, you can do, but I think left aligned is perfectly fine. And if you click the overlay, this will now pop it back over here. And this is where you would now have to think about a background color. So you might need to go and do something like that. You can probably make it be a little bit transparent. You would now mess around with the placement of it. So there's a lot more work required if you want to go down that road, which I don't. So I'm going to undo that and get rid of the overlay. Now let's go and add in a few more fields. We click add fields. I'm going to type in post and I'm going to go grab the date like that. It's put it before the post title link. So just quickly get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of the 20 we got there. In fact, I'm going to go over here and change that 20 to be more like a, I think 10. I'm going to go to my post date. I'm going to put colon. And if I put a Y, I'll get the year. If I do Y and M, I'll get well, you can see what it's doing. And now you can see the difference in the format that we got there. I will go for D capital M and we'll go for a lowercase y like that. Okay, so you can control the style of your dates. Now I'm going to bring over our term and I will rearrange it by the way. So I'm going to hit the pull. No, I'm not going to duplicate. So it brings over the styling. Click that. Uh, in fact, can I just get rid of that first? Cats for categories and we'll add that in and now the wording has appeared. I'm going to make this be a much bolder, like 700 like that, just so it stands out. I am going to drop this down to be a 1.4 as well. Um, remember, uh, web accessibility does allow you to go down to 12 pixel or 1.2 REM. I don't recommend it. I really don't. I feel like that's going too. I mean, look, this is what it would look like. You can get away with it, but I just, I don't feel good about that. But I, I'll, I'm prepared to go down to 1.4. I am going to go to my category. I'm going to pop in a colon and I'm going to say link because I want that to link to the actual. Well, let me show you. Look, let me just hit save for a moment. Okay, just so you understand it. You click this and it takes you to the post, which we don't want. You click this. And remember, I have, in fact, let me pick one. There we go. SEO and keywords. We've only got one post for that. If I click there, sorry, there were two because I forgot. I've got it in here as well. It takes me there. And we've got this rubbish style because we've not set the display conditions yet. So I'm linking to it. It's really quick and easy to do. And before I move on to the next field, I'm going to pick this up and I'm actually going to move it now to just be above the title. In fact, that's now looking not so great. So we'll add in about 20 there. I'm going to get rid of... No, yeah, we'll get rid of that gap there. And... That's the kind of look at the moment. You can, if you want, go and pop in a field and click on the bolt and you can actually type read and you will get this over here, a field, and that will now take you to the post. So if you want to do a read more, go for it. And of course, you can stylize it. So you might go, hey, we're going to make it be a yellow. We're going to give it a bit of padding, something like that. And you could now create a button as well and then stylize it to sit where you want. And the final field I'm going to add is a custom field. We're going to hit the dynamic data. And when you scroll all the way down, eventually right here, you're going to get your fields. They're right at the bottom. Well, they're in the custom field section. I should have just said that. When you go all the way down, reading time, level, and source. I'm not going to do reading time or source yet. I'm going to go for level like that, and you get the words come through. I'm just going to modify the styling of this. I'm going to the typography. I'm going to make this be a 400, like the text that we have below here. I'm going to leave it as a 1.4, and all I'm going to do now here is actually click into the field, and I'm going to say level colon like that. For the content tab, all I'm going to do is adjust the space we have at the bottom. So where we have the margin over here, I'm going to say at the bottom, give me a little bit more spacing. So I'm going to say just go for about 20, no, let's go with 30. Just give me a bit more spacing there like that. We're not going to add in a background color, which you could do if you want. I mean, we are going to have to address something here where we look. Can we see we have this gap? So even if you did have it, it's not very perfect, is it? There will be some that go, well, hey, look, the bulk of it is kind of in line, so let it go. I mean, there'll be some that go, I don't like that. I want that button there to be at the bottom. Like, I want all the buttons to be right at the bottom in line with one another, regardless of what the content is. So what I've done is used a post widget. What you actually need to use is a block 
and convert it to do a query loop, I am now in effect going to basically duplicate our current section that we have here at the bottom. I'm going to get rid of the post. So now we're back to a section and container and I'm going to literally build from scratch, but I'm going to do it really quickly. I wanted to show you the post because when we move to the query loop, everything I now do is going to become a lot easier to understand. So inside of the container, we're now going to go and drop in a block. I'm going to go to the block, which we're familiar with using during this tutorial. And I'm going to say, make it a query loop. Notice the query option has now appeared. You go into here and basically I'm just going to go post, post, we'll leave it in date descending order. I'm not going to change the number of posts. I'm not messing around with any of the terms or what's included or excluded. And remember, we still have the infinite scroll option as well. There is a big difference. In fact, I'm not, I'm going to tell you about the big difference later on. And that is why when you'll understand, why did you even bring the grid builder uh, plugin over? You're not even using it. You'll understand why in a moment. Image. We're going to drop in some, I mean, rich text, but we'll go rich text, rich text again. We'll then go in with a heading. We'll go with rich text and we'll go for a button like that. Now you will notice, oh my God, everything is kind of like duplicating on itself. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to go over to my block, go to my query loop, and I'm going to say, just show me one for now. So it's easier to work with. Now let's go to our image and click down here where we have the bolt. I'm then going to type in feature or feet and go and pick the featured image that is now come through. Don't worry about the size of it just yet. Just get your stuff in. Okay. Then we go to the very first rich text, which if we remember was the keyword. So let's just get rid of the text we have over here. Click the bolt, go to terms, and then I'm going to pick categories. I'm just going to quickly rush through this and then I'll do all the styling. I'm now going to go and pick the uh, date that we have here, current date. I don't like the format of that. So we're going to go here and we're going to go D, capital M and a Y. Heading is not going to be the heading. It's going to be the post title like that. In fact, get rid of the word. I am a heading. In fact, don't forget to put the words colon and link. Let me do it over here with the category as well. We'll just do colon and link again. The bolt on that one. And we're now going to go to the custom fields and pick level. And then I'm going to put the word level before like that. Trust me, once you've done it, uh, it's not that difficult. And I know it feels like I've just replicated a load of effort, but I really wanted to get across what's the problem with if you just use the standard post widget, because a lot of people will go straight to that. And it's almost like if you don't know about the query loop, that little bit there, you may overlook it. Uh, that's a 1.4, that's a 1.6, and that is a 1.4. You could, if you want, set a style, go to row gap and just go for something like 10 pixel like that. And that kind of starts to nicely space things out. Now, before we refine the layout of that, let's just start linking this to the post because at the moment, it doesn't matter where you click, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's go to the image first. Down here, it says link to. I'm going to click this and go to other URL. And then in the next box, I'm going to pick dynamic data. You don't want to go to an external and you don't go to internal because that will only go to specific posts or pages. I want it to be relative or dynamic to the actual post. You go to dynamic data. You then click the bolt and then type the word link and you will see post link. That will now go to the post link. We don't have to worry about the category because we've already put the word link. We're going to go to the button. We're going to pick dynamic data. You're going to hit the bolt. You're going to type in link and you will now go to the post link. So if I save that and we go here now, you click it, it's going to go to the link. Uh, you click over there, it's going to go to digital marketing. We have three that have digital marketing. You click this to I'm a button and again, it goes to the post. So let's just refine the wording on the button. Go back to my query loop and let's now say we want to see more posts and they're all going to sit underneath one another. So I'm going to go to the container that contains the blocks. You've got to get your head around this because you might start going to the blocks and adjusting the width of that and not much happens. Well, it will, but not the way you want. I'm going to go to container. And I'm going to say, make this be a row. Everything now goes jumbled up. But that's because it's piling everything into one. I mean, if I was to now start adding in like 20 more posts, you're going to get all 20 sitting in a row, endless, because we haven't set the wrap. 
And you might say, but this is now back to what we were before. This is no better. But look, let me just first add in some gaps here, 30 pixel on the column and the row. And I might come back and adjust that just so we have a bit more gap. And then I'm going to go to my block. And then I'm going to go to my style because all we've done is wrap the contents of the container. But the blocks are still going all the way across. So let me go and pop in a value of about 335 like that. Now you are going to say, yeah, but your buttons are still not kind of in line with where they need to be. We'll go over to our block, go to our content, and you see here space between. So that will now create a space between. Then I go to my container and I say I want everything inside of there to be stretched. Look at that. Can you see it? It's like you've got to do one bit and then you've got to do another bit. But we've got our block and we know the items are spaced between, but it's still not doing it. And that's because the container that they all sit into needs to now just stretch a bit. That's what we've got now. And our buttons are now in line. Five over there, pixel space from the top. Perfectionist bit of me just kicking in. I just like to have my spacing. So when we get over to this block here now, for the mobile, I want the style to actually be a hundred percent like that. I don't want it to be shrunken down as it was for the desktop. Desktop, I don't mind. Mobile, I want it to be a hundred percent outside of the block, but still in the container. I'm going to go and drop in a heading like that. Just pick it up and put it in the right uh, place over there. Um, remember though, that because everything is set as a row, we just got to go to our heading go and set it to have a width of 100%. Because we went and added in a column gap though, it's now created a gap over there, which I don't like. These are things you sometimes do in hindsight. So content, I'm gonna get rid of the 60 pixel there, go to the block though, and I will do it over there for the block. So I'll say, give me a 60 pixel over there, which I don't mind. For the heading though, which we have here, I'm gonna pick one of our classes and we're gonna go for heading page. Remember we did that? Uh, I might just want to, I can't remember what the gap was, but I think it was about, um, I think it was 5 REM. I'm going to go with about 20 pixels like that. I'm going to change our heading to be our amazing blog. Then I'm going to go over to the settings, go to template settings, go to conditions, hit the plus sign, and I'm going to say show this for the archive. Basically for all archives, to be honest, I don't really need to pick that, but I'm going to leave it as all archives. Go and hit save. Overall, that is looking so much better than what we had before. But what about adding in a filtering system? Now, I want to show you what you will get traditionally with Bricks and why you might want to move to using Grid Builder, which is a premium plugin, which is $49 per year, but it is worth it. So above of our new block post loop that we've gone and created, I've gone and popped in a new section container right at the top. I'm not going to do no styling on this and all we have inside of here is the post three columns, right? There is an option down here called filter. You do not get this when you do the post or the query loop with the block. Look, if you scroll down, in fact, if we click on query, you don't get that filter option. And if I was to go over here, and night type in filter, there is nothing there for you. So on the traditional post, the option for filter is there. And if I click it and I now go and say, well, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll go for the categories. And then what will happen is at the top, we will now have this become visible. Now I'm not gonna bother styling this, okay? So if I now click any one of these, it is, I have to admit, very nice and stylish. What we're then gonna do is go over to WordPress, and go to Grid Builder. I'm not going to put a link for this in the video description. You can go and search for it. So I don't want you to say, oh, you're only doing this for affiliate purposes. I'm not got any affiliate set with them, set up with them whatsoever. What you would do is after installing it uh, and you've paid for it, you then also want to download the Bricks extension or the add-on as well. This is free. Well, once you've paid for the Grid Builder, you can then just go and download it. So go and get that. Then go to Grid Builder and go to where it says All Facets. You don't really need to mess around with any settings whatsoever. We're going to go here and we're going to click Create a Facet. And we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Categories and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here as well. Then I'm going to go to Behavior. For my categories, I do like the button look. So we're going to go for a button. You could go for a drop down, checkbox, select. You can even go for range if you've got WooCommerce and a price range. Well, we're going to go for filter and we're going to go for buttons. 
down here now is where I get to select what I want. Now we are using categories so very easily we're just going to pick categories. We do have a subcategory for one of them but so we can show that if we want but I am also going to say do not show empty choices. Anyway I'm going to hit save changes. Underneath our header I am now going to go and drop in our grid builder. So what you can do is type in facet or face and you'll see the option there. Now, as soon as you do that, the layout's all gone really, really funny. That's because we just need to set the style of this to be a hundred percent. Because remember, this container is wrapped. However, you can't see it. It is there, but it's not visible. Go to the content tab and select one of them. We'll go for categories, then select the post it's going to touch. So if you have got maybe two or three, make sure you pick the right one. You'll know which one it is when you pick it, because if you pick it and that category or that field you selected is not present or relevant for the post, it will just say there's nothing to be found. If I go back into Grid Builder in WordPress and the settings, you will see color schemes that you can use to modify. So I've given this a slightly darker yellow color. So it works. You do have this title over here. If you don't want the title, unfortunately, there is no setting for you to remove it. So what you've got to do is right click it, inspect it, get the class name for it, which in this case is WPGB facet title. Go to the style tab, go to CSS, WP, well, dot is quite important. WPGB facet title display none. And now that wording is disappeared. I'm just going to go over to my facet. I'm just going to give it a bit of layout over here, 30 pixel. And that's looking a little bit better now because now we have our filtering system. And I know it's not as like as snazzy as what you're getting with bricks. But if you're trying to work with like a post like the, the block with the post query loop, that's what you're going to have to do. However, if you're not so fussed about the buttons not being level, you could just use the post element and the built-in filter. So you've got to weigh it up really with, do you want to spend more for the grid builder or not? 